Hey guys and welcome to the MacBook Pro Retina Display Review. First let's go over the specs quickly for the people that don't know what comes packed with it. This comes with a 2.3 GHz quad-core Intel i7 Ivy Bridge processor which is the latest from Intel. It comes with 8 gigs of RAM standard, 256 GB solid state drive, an Intel 4000 HD integrated graphics with the Nvidia 650M backing it for dedicated graphics. This comes with a new redesigned MagSafe 2 port on the left side, two Thunderbolt ports, and a USB 3 port and a headphone jack on the left side. Now on the right side it comes with another USB 3 port, an HDMI port, and an SD card slot. Both of those USB 3 ports are also 2.0 hybrid slots. And it still comes with a large multi-touch glass trackpad and that awesome backlit keyboard that we're used to seeing on these MacBook Pros. Now the big deal about this model is the 15.4 inch 2880 by 1800 resolution IPS panel and it is nothing short of incredible. Now this screen has great color saturation and it has really deep blacks and it has much better color contrast than on the previous models. You have to see this screen in person, pictures or videos will not do it justice and the brightness is decreased on it though, that's the only downside that I see. It still has that glossy screen but the brightness could be a tad brighter but I'm sure that has to do with the power consumption of this panel. That's the only downside. Now this does have an updated design and it is very thin. You can see that it is 0.71 inches thin to the previous 0.95 inch on the older MacBook Pros. But you can see now that the Kensington lock is gone and also that infrared IR sensor on the front is also gone. Now there are new vent openings on both sides of the chassis and there's also vent openings on the top by the screen hatch for better heat dissipation. But if you look, that the whole backside, even when it comes off, the memory is non-user replaceable. It is soldered onto the motherboard. But the SSD might be replaceable down the road if they make a kit like OWC does now for the MacBook Airs. So let's see if that happens or not. I hope it's user replaceable in the future. You can see that the super drive now is gone, so no optical drive at all. But you can always get the external one if you need to use CDs, but I never do, so I don't see a need for it. Now this still comes with Mac OS 10.7 which is the same Mac OS that we've had and you can see it's a little bit more iPad like. Mountain Lion was just released and I don't have that on here quite yet. But let's just check out how fast the solid state drive is that comes with this. Now if you look at this the write speed is over 400 which is pretty fast and we have a read speed of almost 450 so that is very quick so the SSD is definitely worth it. Now let's run a few benchmarks and here is Nova Bench and we're just gonna speed it up real fast because you don't have to watch this whole thing that'd be pretty boring. So the Nova Bench score is 10,082. Alright so let's go ahead and run Geekbench and see what we get for that. And this is also shortened so you don't have to watch the whole thing. But the Geekbench score is 11,036 which is not bad. That's definitely a bump up from the last generation. Now let's go ahead and run Cinebench which will show you the graphical power of the Nvidia 650M. And this is also sped up so you don't have to watch the whole thing, but the OpenGL tests, you get 32.76 frames per second. I've seen it run a little higher than that, actually. Now we're going to go ahead and run the CPU test of Cinebench. And this is release 11.5. And people have been getting higher scores than I have, and it's been kind of inconsistent. But the first time I ran it here, I ended up getting a... 5.39 which is more like the last generation processors then I ran it a second time and ended up getting a 6.14 which is closer to what everybody else has been getting. Now on a daily basis the scrolling is fine there's a little bit of an issue not being 30 frames per second like the older ones but you can see here it 
it's not a deal breaker or anything and I can show you later as well of what's going on with the scrolling but for normal day-to-day -day use it's really not a big deal and you can see here the specs and it is running 10.7.4 now looking at photos on this is fantastic I can see a professional photographer loving this this is just on iPhoto and you can see that that's the full set frame picture and even when I zoom in it is so detailed and so crisp you can really see all the all of the resolution and all of the pixels so I can see photographers loving it now for all the gamers out there this GPU is pretty capable and this is Diablo 3 and it's a pretty graphic intensive game there's more graphics there's games that are more graphics intensive but this one is running at 1680 by 1050 on resolution and you can see it's pretty smooth so far no frame drops there's a few here and there but um, it all depends and there is retina display support at 2880 by 1800 but if you run it you run about 19 to 20 frames per second with nothing on a screen but as soon as you hit a battle scene it's going to be pretty choppy and it's not that it's unplayable it's just you wouldn't really want to play it like that so well you can see here on a, a normal resolution this looks great and it's pretty fluid I've had no problems with it at all even running some of the other games you can really do pretty well on it and especially if you boot camp into Windows you can get probably even better performance so this is a pretty good gaming machine as a whole so you can see right here that Diablo 3 plays just fine so if you're worried about the graphics chip I really wouldn't worry about it alright let's just get out of that but Everything else here is what's normal about a Mac besides this redesign and this great screen, but you still get the same Mac OS experience, great email, great web browsing. And you can see here with the scrolling, uh, it's not perfectly super smooth. Um, it's been proven that it's not 30 frames per second when it is scrolling. So if that's a big deal for you, then I would just run it on a lower resolution or I would think about buying the older MacBook Pro or the non-Retina Pro, I should say, not the old one. Because we do have the same specs on this on a older chassis. But you can see that it's pretty smooth, pinch to zoom is nice, and the scrolling is decent enough. I don't think it would really bother you. So the question is, is this the Mac for you? You really have to think about what you really want in this Mac. If you want to be able to have the memory user replaceable and you want the hard drive replaceable, then I would really not get this Mac. I would look at the non-Retina Mac for that is only possible on the non-Retina MacBook Pro. So if that is important to you, I would not buy this machine. Now, is this machine perfect? No, it's not. But if you want this ridiculously high definition screen that will set precedence for the next generation of computing, then I would buy this. But is it worth your $2,200? I would have to look at the other options and go look at this screen in the store and see if it's worth it for you. But I have enjoyed it so far and I think it's worth it. So subscribe today and if you have any questions leave them in the comments below and I thank you for watching the video. See you in the next one.